Dear Father, thank you, Lord God, for a brand new day, another chance, another opportunity to get everything in right order. Thank you, Father, for all that you've already done in and through our lives. Thanking you, Father, for our lying down on last evening. You keeping us, Father, safe throughout the night. And letting us, allowing us to come forward, Father, with all strength and things that we need to be able to stand in this new day. How awesome and great that really are. So thank you, Father. We're very grateful for all the good things and merciful, gracious things that thou has done in and in our lives. So bless this day, Father. Help us to not only be blessed in this day, but to be a blessing to some others, whomever we may meet. So, Father, anoint your man servant that you will select us and also let it be over the ministry and help us to all follow pay attention and be attentive to what he thus said here today and bless all the sick everywhere follow all over the world and all the bereaved families and bless all the less fortunate all those that haven't got to know you yet even in the free part of this and help them to realize that they too must be saved. And so we thank you, Father, for this day. And let your spirit abide richly with us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Thank you, brother. Praise God. Now we have our fourth commandment recited by Brother Ross, found in Exodus 28 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep home. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy works, but the seventh day is the seventh day of the Lord thy God. And then thou shalt not do any work, thou know thy son, nor thy dog, nor thy mantle, nor thy mantle, nor thy cow, nor thy strangers, that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, but seeing all thy wisdom is. And what's that the seventh day? Well, for the Lord was the seventh day in heaven. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brothers. My, my recorder, Lord, that just passed uh, Okay, amen, amen, praise God. Now we'll have a Help the Living segment, amen. 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 And I'll be doing that Help the Living segment today by the grace of God. Amen. And uh, the topic is called Brain Food and Heart Food. What's the name? Brain Food, Heart Food. Amen. And the topic, <laughs> and that's the subject, so the, the topic is food for thought, food for thought. Okay. And so now when you think of brain food and health food, what comes to your mind? Well, I, go ahead, Brother Roy. Hmm? Go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. When, when I think of brain food, I think of, you know, natural foods. Okay. And, um, but, at the same time, health food, you could think the same thing. Um, with health heart food, food, though. Brain food and heart food. Health food, oh, oh, I see it. You said brain food and health food or brain food and heart food? Brain food and heart food. Okay, then thank you. Okay, that does help. Yeah, when I think of heart food, I think of, for our spirit man, um, spiritual, the bread of life, the word of God. When I think of brain food, I'm thinking of natural, those things we consume, natural foods that we consume to help our brain, our mind be alert and able to, our body to function um, as it should. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about Blaming food, giving healthy food, and giving you natural things that you need and will make you not get like sick and stuff like that. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, I think that uh, the brain food is food that's rich in nutrients that's uh, in the natural essence. Uh, more so like the plants and the nuts. And it's been proven that a lot of the different berries and have antioxidants and some of the nuts they do as well. And that's good for our hearts or whatever from some of what we've learned. So 
And once you put that together, combine that together, that is food for thought because if you know, the, the cell structure is right, and the blood the, the vessels are full of the right nutrients, you will have that food for thought. You'll think clearly. Amen. Okay. All right. Can you say your question again so I can? I may, I may not have heard it clearly. I said <laughs> one of these subjects is called brain food and heart food. And I asked the question when, when you heard, when you hear that word brain food and heart food, what comes to your mind? It's not a right or wrong answer. Yeah, well, for me, when you, I, yeah, I just want to, I didn't hear, uh, brain food to me is, is that is, is food that will help your uh, thinking capacity, your intellectual thinking capacity. Um, I guess, you know, because I think there probably are certain foods that you can eat that help with your cognitive capacity and your heart food. You know, I just, to me, that, that, that probably things that probably deal with blood flow. Like, you know, um, yeah, blood flow, I would probably, if I, yeah, that's probably the most lip, best way I can describe it. But, but you know, it's not good, not, that's good for your overall body in one sense, because whatever's going to help you know, low cholesterol, produce low cholesterol, things that's going to help the, the blood flow in your body, which pertains to your heart. Okay. All right. Uh, now, when I said it's not a right or wrong answer, I, I incorrectly, I'm not looking for a particular answer. There is a right or wrong answer, but I'm not looking for a particular answer. All right. Now, I'm, I'm, now I'll put it this way. Uh, uh, go ahead. I'm thinking about um, greens vegetables and um, two things. If you got God, he, he heals the body. But we have to put in the body the right foods for the body that helps it to function in the proper Essence. Okay. All right. Now I will put it this way. Brain food and heart food, food for thought. Now what comes to your mind? The same thing come to your mind or something different come to your mind? When I say brain food and heart food, food for thought. So now do the same concept come to your mind or something else come to your mind? No, something else comes now. All right, what comes to your mind now, then, brother? Is that spiritual food? Okay. All right. Anyone else? All right. All right. If not anyone else, you know, brother Wayne said. Right, by the way, it all seem to be the same to him. That's what it appears to be. Yeah. All right. So, you know, and 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 you know, food is the Bible says give a meat in due season, right? Yeah. So every time you hear food, you're not really talking about food. That's right. You could be talking about the word of God, right? Amen. Mm -hmm. Or could be talking about sound doctrine. Amen. So to clear up some, some misconceptions that many, 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 many people have about what constitutes death. <laughs> now, do anyone know the difference between medically, clinically, and dead? Medically dead, clinically dead, and dead. So let me put it this way. If your heart stopped beating for a few seconds, are you dead? No, no not necessarily. So, brother and sister, so uh, now, if your brain stopped working and your heart still beating, are you are you are you dead? Yes. No. Oh. Somebody Clinically. said yes. Somebody said no. Clinically. Clinically. <laughs> yeah. You're dead. So, the brain comes in the whole part of the body. So when we when a person says, "Well, my heart stopped beating, I was dead," and they had to revive me, is that a true statement? No. Uh, no, it's not. It's not. No, it's not. 
Because we'll tell people, oh, he died, his heart stopped being that. We got it. I, you know, I heard a statement last night and I and I was laying on my bed this morning and the Lord said I need to deal with that. So I asked Sister Michelle, well, I don't know if I asked him, I told her, I, 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 think, I think I probably told her, like, hey, I, I need to do the uh, kept the living segment today because we, we need to clear this up. Brothers and sisters, when your, when your heart stops beating, that doesn't mean you're dead. Now, you got a few minutes before you be con considered dead. And that's different between medically or clinically, which is the same thing, and being dead. Clinically that's dead, right. medically dead, the same thing. And dead is some is some different. So yeah. so we per now, so now have you heard of the terminology or the saying that people are brain dead? Yes. Mm -hmm. But yeah. not. I mean, we say that all the time about people walking, living, talking, but we say, we say brain dead, we're trying to say they ain't got no sense, but not that way. Not I'm talking about in, in the sense of an accident or, or whatever it may be or something like that. So, so, so when we say someone, when they, someone said someone is brain dead, what are they saying? Yeah. There's no functionality from the brain. Meaning? Meaning. Because the Bible says in, in Psalm 139, verse 14, I think, we were fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. And yeah, it's more to that to that to that verse. But go ahead, okay. Brother Brother Roy. No, I was just saying uh, when uh, the brain's when the brain is inactive, what's gonna send the neurons throughout the brain to the different parts of your body, your nerve cells and all this. And then make them come back to the synopsis and all these things. And I done a study on this some time ago. <clears throat> but anyway. Okay. And a lot of times they're kept on a ventilator to see if they can get some activity back in the brain. A lot of times it, it doesn't it doesn't actually return. So yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Okay. Anyone else? Little Roy can't come, sir. Say again. Roy, the elder, he's trying to say something. Come on, come on, please. Um I was going to say that if the brain of bunch of one, how are you going to move your body? That's, that. like that. That's good. Good question. <laughs> Amen. Mm. All right. So, have anyone heard of the, the uh, UDDA, U as an umbrella, B as in Delta, D as in Delta, A as an act? UDDA, UDDA. I know Sister Trina, I've read of UDDA. So UDDDA, and uh, it is Uniform Determination of Death Act. Uniform Determination of Death Act. Now what that is, and I, you know, matter of fact, uh, but I didn't, uh, my answer didn't come from me on this morning, my answer came from the Holy Spirit. But I just I just went back and looked at it to see, you know, because I know some people may not believe what the Lord says, but they'll be what man says. So um, Uniform Determination of Death Act, UDDA, UDDDA, provides a comprehensive legal basis for determining death in all situations. This is a technical act that merely defines death clinically and does not deal with suicide, assisted suicide, or right to die. Okay, so uh, now it, it clearly states an individual who has sustained either irreversible cessation of sexual and respiratory function or irreversible cessation of all function of the entire brain, including the brain stem, is dead. So, in other words, you lose air, brain function. Heart function, you, you're dead. Right. So either some people, they say they, they, they stop breathing and all, either their, their heart's still breathing and their brain doesn't function, they ain't getting no neurons, electrons, <clears throat> and no sensory nerves to the, to the stem. So, cause we know the, the heart does what? Pump blood, blood Oops. and what? Oxygen. To the, throughout the whole body, right? Yes, it does. And then the, those red blood cells carry what? Oxygen to the brain. Yeah. So therefore, by, by us knowing that, when we heard people say, oh, I died because my heart stopped, no. 
<laughs> and they say, oh, I died twice. No. No, no, you don't die. Because the heart stopped beating twice. Now, after, after a period of time, if you don't get the oxygen and blood circulating, and that's why they give them CPR, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So keep the keep the oxygen in the body so you can keep the heart beating and so they can get blood to the brain before the brain stops. Because if a person is brain dead, they may live on and be a vegetable, maybe in a comatose state, or may end up if the, if the, if the, if the, if the heart stop beating for such a period of time, they could be mm -hmm. revived, but they may have a, a paralysis, or, or they may not be able to talk, or, or they may live, but not the same life they lived before. So, right. but if the brain and a heart stop after a period of time, if the brain stops after a period of time, you're gonna be more of a vegetative, vegetative state. But if, if you can get both of them working, uh, get blood to the body and the brain, and the function and to get those electrical uh, neutrons, electrons run into your body, then you can, the, the brain can continue to function at its pace and won't lose no vital organs, no sensories, no, you know, none of those things. So why am I saying that to say this? When we heard people say, oh, he died, we got to inquire. And most of the time they're saying, because my heart stopped. Mm. And that don't mean you, your heart stopped, that don't mean you're dead. Because you know, yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. If they in that in that state, how they know they heart stopped? They died. Somebody told them. How they know they <laughs> they died? Why? Somebody told them. That's right. And they could have told them a lot. And you know what? You you think you think you did, <laughs> but you're not. You just fainted. You you don't remember anything. Uh -uh. But you may, I'm not saying you think you died, but but what I'm saying, I see here, Brother King, but what I'm saying is that that you may believe that you don't remember anything. That's where I'm going with that statement. Brother King, go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I believe if, if, if that was the definition of death, the NFL football player um, a, a couple of weeks ago, they, they collided and they had to revive him on the field with um, the EKG machine or whatever you call it. Right. His heart stopped. So it's under your definition, if that was the definition of death, you could say he died, because they had to do it to him twice. Right. He was standing at the hospital, and he was right. unconscious. So he right. didn't die, but I mean, he was about to die, <laughs> but they revived him. Right, and that's why people say, and that's why people say, well, uh, uh, he died because the heart stopped. No, they don't understand. They not have done their research. And I you know I heard the statement last night. I didn't I didn't make a comment on it. But then I was laying in my bed this morning and thinking, talking to the Lord. And the Lord gave me all this information that I needed to share with us. And then I went back and like I said, I ain't going to believe man. They ain't going to believe God, but they'll believe what man says. So after God showed it to me, I just went in and found it. And then I was not checking God out by, by, by what's, what man says. I was just having that information in case someone wanted to go research it and find out what the scientific so-called science uh Foster so called wanted to see. Yes, ma'am. Uh, whoever the hand is. You know, um, that made it that, um, took my mind to the little girl. You know, oh, okay. uh, wasn't her father? He she he went. You know, um, um, I forgot how the story go, but I remember the little girl. She um, um, needed some help. Mm -hmm. And the only person that could help was Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I believe that when things happen like that and we come back, let's give God the glory and right. the praise and the honor because it's his doing yeah. oh. that kept us alive and brought us back. Can I, amen. Can I share this right here, Brother Martin, briefly? Uh, Go ahead, bro. This happened and it was... It was actually put in the media about an occurrence such as similar to what Sister Mary was talking about, what you all were talking about. This person, yeah, man had been in a, was injured or something, had been injured. And they got him to the hospital. And he flatlined. And, you know, they say after so many minutes, they determine you that it's dead and just no need to try anything else. And so the nurse said she was, she was, the nurse was, 
is do, you're still continue to do CPR and the doctor told just stop. He's mm-hmm. go ahead. She said, no, let's just try a little bit, a little bit longer. And he had, I think he had exceeded the seven minutes, to three minutes to five minutes, then seven minutes. And he was just telling me, you need to stop. And he started to, as he was covering him up with the white sheet, he started breathing and started talking to him. Right. So just like Sister Mary saying, we can't say until God says it's over. It ain't right. over. Mm-hmm. Right. right. So and and and, and like like and, and this is another another example. Then we'll bring this to a close. This is another example why you know they're not dead. Because when they wake up, they say, Oh, I saw a bright light. Well, you everybody died, they didn't say and the Bible ain't say they saw anything. Right. Amen. So everything you you was and you know and just like now I'm, I'm gonna liken this into to uh, sleep, uh, just like um, when you sleep, you're unconscious. That's right. You don't know what's going on. You have all kind of crazy dreams sometimes. And uh, so, uh, so when people say, "Oh no, I, I was dead. they said I died twice," but I remember I was I saw a big light and I saw oh, okay yeah you know you wasn't dead you saw that <laughs> but anyway. Go ahead, I saw somebody's hand, finger. You know it's the light of God that they saw. Well, not all, not well, not not always. Sometimes it's that medication they own that they or they just imagine. Oh, yeah, oh, they I, got up and saw the light from the ceiling. If it ain't dark, oh, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's a good point. Hallucination. Right. Hallucination. Uh, yeah. okay, amen. All right, so. I'm gonna read what's one thing, then we're gonna go to our song service, then we're gonna go to our question, then we're gonna go to our Bible study about God's grace. This is what it says here. Another, another statement I want to read. Clinically dead. Breathing and consciousness will cease within a few seconds of the heart stopping. <clears throat> clinically, clinically, death is reversible. Researchers believe that there is a window of about four minutes from the moment of the cardiac arrest to the development of a serious brain damage. Amen. It says, usually a person is declared clinically dead when the blood circulation and the breathing completely stops. The, the differences in the case of declaring someone legally dead is, a, is that restitution, resuscitation is not possible. See, usually a doctor must declare that a person is dead or body must be found for legal death declaration, meaning that both is stopped of a period of time and no re- revive. That's when you that's when you consider actually dead, dead, dead. Because in that case, nobody would be dead. Nobody would die. I mean, the way that people said my heart stopped, a lot of people heart stopped. And someone told me, your heart stopped, you died. And that's where they get that from. <laughs> a misconception of what 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 death is. All right, any questions or comments before we move on to our song service? So we've said brain dead, clinically dead, and did we say what medically dead is? Is that the medically same dead, thing? Medically dead and clinically dead is the same thing. Okay. And then the third, there were three though. What was the third one? Dead. You heard me? Right, Phys- like physically dead. Well, all of this physically, but it's dead. You're dead. No, no coming back until Christ come back. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now, praise God. 